nematodes, 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 nematodes. <laughs> Hello guys, welcome. I'm Alyssa, if you're just joining me here. And today is all about nematodes. And I'm gonna tell you what these are and how to use them and how you can get rid of your fungus gnats because I've had fungus gnats and they're freaking annoying. This is the best method that I have found to significantly reduce and hopefully eradicate the population. So after this round, I'm hoping that I don't see a single fungus gnat anymore. So first things first, what are beneficial nematodes? You can't see them. They're microscopic, which means to the naked eye, they're invisible. So they're tiny little worms. They hunt down insect larvae in the soil. I know it sounds weird, but honestly, you, you don't even know that they're there. At first, when I first heard of these, I'm like, I don't want little worms living in my soil. They're doing so much good stuff underneath the soil. They're eating all of the bad uh, insects. So they really have truly been amazing for me. There are different kinds. I like the SF. I will put it on the screen here for you and they prey on fungus gnats, root aphids, thrips, and there's a lot of other soil, soil dwelling pests that they attack. So you know what they are now, let me tell you how they work. So once you water them in, they just go about doing whatever it is that they do. They hunt down the larvae in the soil. They parasitize the insect larvae. They release a bacteria from their digestive tract while they're feeding on the host pests. And infected pests will darken in color and perish within seven to 10 days. Nematodes will emerge from the perishing host to hunt for more pests. They're known to prey on pests in the larval stage, but they have also been known to target pests at all stages of their life cycle. You can use them indoors, you can use them outdoors. If you have gardens, greenhouses, pretty much anywhere. And this is nice because they give you a little guide here and it tells you which nematodes are good for whatever it is that you are wanting them to attack. So for fungus gnats, it's listed down here you want SF, which is this kind here. And for houseplants, another pest that we worry about is thrips. And thrips, you want SF nematodes. But I order mine from Nature's Good Guys. You can check DMV beneficials. I have not ordered from them. I have had a great luck with Nature's Good Guys. I just order directly on their website, not sponsored at all. I get my beneficial mites, those little bags that you see hanging from them too. And I've had great luck. I've only been using them about a year, but most recently within like the past few months, because I was using BTI for a while. And if you don't know what BTI is, it's basically a bacterium that kills the insect larvae, the fungus gnat larvae, and mosquito larvae, and black fly larvae. It just works on the gnats and mosquitoes. But I use that religiously. I loved BTI for a while. I have the bits and the dunks. I used to use the bits and then they started molding. So then I switched to using dunks. I would soak it in my watering can. You have to soak for at least 30 minutes and you have to water every single time you water. You have to water every single plant and you just basically, you couldn't stop using it. Cause if you stopped using it and a gnat breaks out, then the whole like life cycle is gonna start over again and it's really annoying. So as much as I loved BTI and it did help, it wasn't 100% effective. And if I brought home a new plant with gnats, I just feel like they just got to be out of control again. So I've gone away from using BTI. Um, I just, the soaking process and just having to do it with every single time you water, it's a lot of extra work. And honestly, it wasn't that effective in the long run. So I just, I just don't recommend using BTI anymore. Nematodes are the way to go. I'm not sure if BTI can harm nematodes. I'm not positive on that. I had read something where it said that it wasn't, but I don't think, I don't know for certain, but I wouldn't use BTI in conjunction with nematodes just to be on the safe side. So you know what they are and kind of how they work and, the next thing for me with nematodes is 
I haven't quite figured out the quantity that I need for all of my house plants. I started off with 5 million and I don't think 5 million was enough. So the nematodes are in a little kind of powder bag like this. So this is the kind of nematodes that I have, SF, and I have 10 million. So you can get 5, 10, 25, 50, uh, 250. <laughs> On this little handy nandy paper, it does say 10 million can treat up to 600 square feet. I guess if you're using this in like a garden or a greenhouse or something like that, but it was hard to measure how much I actually need for house plants. I feel like 10 million worked pretty good for me last time. So that's why I got another 10 million and it's best to apply them seasonally, uh, like a few times a year for best prevention. So after this time, I'm gonna water them in probably again in like late fall, like November-ish timeframe. And then I will water them in around March season when spring is coming around. And then again, like July, August timeframe when gnats kind of have been very active all summer. So that's my plan. I'm gonna use them about three times a year. They actually can live in the soil like 18 months. They can live a very long time in the soil. And that's what's nice about them is you just water them in one time and that's it. They do all the work. You don't have to do anything else. You can just water like normal. You don't have to add anything in your water. You don't have to remember to do it. It just takes a little bit of upfront work when you are watering them in. It's just a little bit more effort, but it's worth it to not have to do anything else when you water your plants. So to me, it's just, it's totally worth the investment. And I don't think I paid that much for nematodes. I think probably like 20 some dollars, which is not bad. I had to pay to get this shipped, obviously. It's just worth saving my sanity. Uh, I just can't be bothered with using BTI anymore. If you do order from Nature's Good Guys, they come in this little packet here. You want to keep this in the refrigerator. It needs to be cool. Um, between 36 and 45 degrees Fahrenheit. You don't wanna freeze them and you can store them for up to 30 days. So if you get them and you don't really have the time to water all your plants, you can store them in your fridge up to 30 days and then when you're ready to use them, just take them out and you'll be mixing it in your water jugs and then you can water your plants with that. And you can actually mix this up to into five gallons of water. So I actually have gallons of water. I'm going to be um, using four, I believe. It says they're not, so they're not a chemical. So their effectiveness will not be reduced by the amount of water used to create the release solution. Adjust the concentration of the solution based on the extent of the pest infestation and size of area to be treated. So that tells me it doesn't matter if you use one or five gallons, the effectiveness will be the same. So you want to adjust the concentration based on the amount of plants or co like coverage that you're doing. So for me, I, I think four gallons was pretty good to get through my collection. So you, you can activate, which is like mixing the powder into the gallon of jug, that's called activating. And once you mix it with the water, you have to release these in one hour. So you have one hour to go around to all your plants and water them in. So yeah, you have to move quick. So my advice is kind of go around very quickly, water your plants. You're just watering the soil. If you have a lot of plants that are very thirsty, I honestly would recommend just going around and watering your plants first and then going around and adding a little bit of nematode water into each one. If you wait to water when your plants are thirsty, a lot of that water is going to drain straight through. You're going to waste a lot of it and you're going to need a lot more water, which you can only do up to five gallons. So I would not do it when your plants are super, super thirsty, if that makes sense. Fungus gnats like to, um, live in soil. They like that organic matter found in soil. I've never had gnats inside of my moss. Um, sometimes they hover around the moss if it's damp, if I have a bad infestation, but I've never had an outbreak come out of moss. <laughs> That's just in my experience. I've never seen that. So I don't treat my moss. Back when I was watering with BTI, I was watering through the moss with that because I only water the moss when I water my moss poles and it was the only way to get the soil wet. And then I was using a lot more water. So yeah, <laughs> I'm not watering nematodes in the moss because they only live, they only hunt down insect larvae in the soil. So 
That's all you need to do. I'm just going to add a little bit into each one of my pots. Just go through. Uh, I'm going to do like, this will be activated with nematodes. I'm going to pour it. I'm going to go around and add a little bit to each, every single one of my plants in my home. I'm not doing outside plants though. When I have to bring my outside plants back in for the winter, I'll order another round of nematodes. It'll probably, it probably won't be until November. And that's when I had planned on doing another round anyway. Also, there's a few other tips when releasing nematodes. The best time of day to release them is early morning or kind of in the evening. You don't want to do it midday. Now it says to water, specifically it says to water soil before application and soil surface should be kept moist for two weeks after. I don't really suggest that honestly because if you're keeping your soil moist and you're watering when your soil is already wet, you can, it can lead to root rot on indoor house plant. So that's the only like caution because I think I did do that to one of my plants when I watered them last time with nematodes a few months ago. So I would just make sure it doesn't dry out all the way. Like when it's getting to a point where it needs water, make sure you give it water so that those nematodes can live as long as possible. Like I said, they can live up to 18 months. Also keep in mind adult gnats are different than the larvae stage. Adult gnats that fly around, the only way to get rid of those is by using a sticky trap to catch them, using like a little dish of a di dish soap and some like apple cider vinegar so that they're attracted to that sweet smell and then the dish soap will trap them. You can sit dishes of that around to catch any of the adults or they'll just kind of die off within a week. Adult fungus gnats can live like eight days and they can lay hundreds of eggs in the soil. So one gnat, one gnat is all it takes to cause an outbreak. So you don't need to go like changing all of your soil. Fungus gnats, if you have soil, fungus gnats are going to be an issue because again, they're, they're always going to be around. They're attracted to that organic matter. They come in from outside. They come in from new plants you bring home. There's uh, larvae in the bagged soils sometimes that you buy. So once you water, they hatch and you have a problem again. So if you're not using any preventative when you're using soil, you're going to have gnats. But using nematodes seasonally is going to be your best prevention. For me, after I water these in, like it said, seven to ten days, they will um, you'll you'll start to notice a huge decrease in the gnat population as they're eating the larvae. They can't hatch and can't have any like gnats flying around and all the adults will eventually die off. So give it a couple weeks after you water these in, you are gonna to start to notice a huge improvement in the amount of gnat population. I know this is very talkative, but I just wanted to give you all the details. Again, everything that you need to know is on this little pamphlet if you order from Nature's Good Guys. Everything is here. It has so much helpful information. So I think I pretty much covered everything about nematodes. I don't think I left anything out. I'm going to stick this back in my fridge for a little bit, this packet, and I'm going to go around to my collection for like the next 30 minutes and just with regular water, I'm just going to go around and water anyone that's super thirsty. Shouldn't take too long. Since I only have an hour to water these in once I activate them with water. I just don't want to run out of time and I want these to, I want as many to survive as possible. Once I'm ready to mix these, I will come back on. I'll show you how I mix them up and what I do and a little bit of me watering them in and yeah, that'll be it. I am back. I'm getting ready to activate them, <laughs> which is just mixing them with water. I bought some distilled water because I haven't been using my rain barrel because I need to clean it. I still haven't cleaned it. Some of my like calatheas and stuff are getting a little finicky that I've been using tap water. So I'm going to use distilled today. So I have my gallon jugs. I have four of them. The nematodes are in this little packet and I just basically, ju you want to get all the powder down to one side so you can open it. So I basically just take the powder and just shimmy some <laughs> into each gallon. And 
just mixed in all of them. And so you wanna mix it because it does settle the powder. It uh, settles at the bottom, you see? So you just wanna give it, make sure you have a lid on good and give it a good shake. You just wanna mix it all up. See how it's settled at the bottom? Just give it a good mix. <laughs> Make sure your lid is on. And I just take my watering can. And I go around to literally every single plant. <laughs> So I'm just gonna start over here at my window and yeah, I'm just watering in like you were normally be watering your plants, except you're just watering in nematodes. I was just laughing because as I was finishing up here with the nematodes, I found mealies on some of my Hoyas over here by this window. So I just went online to order lace wings. I haven't tried them yet. They are going to eat the mealies. They eat thrips, aphids. So yes, I can't wait to get those. I, I saw them on at least four Hoyas over here and I have like probably 10 Hoyas that I moved out of my plant room here. So Neely's love Hoyas. Uh, yeah, so the lace wings should take care of them. Uh, I lo I'm looking forward to trying them out because I just get excited now. I don't know. I just can't do the whole like treatment method and trying to hose plants off, alcohol and a Q-tip. It's just too much work for me. I just, I just want something easy, you know, and that's effective. So yeah, I will let you know about the lace wings if I end up liking them. As far as the nematodes go, I got them watered in, in like 45 minutes. I used four gallons and it was enough to water enough in to all my plants. So if you have a large collection or if your plants are more thirsty, you might have to spread it out into five gallons. It's just, it's up to you. Uh, and you can order more if you feel like you need more. I feel like 10 million was enough for my plants to water in. I hope your fungus gnats are gone for you soon. I know how annoying they can be. And I seriously just finding nematodes and using them have been just such a lifesaver and a time saver. And it's just, I don't know, fungus gnats are just so flippin' annoying. And it's just so nice not having them buzz around me all the time. And yeah, I just, hopefully this round will completely knock them out and then I won't have a single fungus gnat, which would be absolutely amazing. <laughs> so yeah, let me know if you have any questions about anything, if there was something I didn't cover and I will talk to you guys later.